Hello everyone, my name is Doug Hills and this is the Manga Studio Guide. Today's episode is the first in a series of episodes covering how you could use Manga Studio's perspective rulers to not only create a scene, but also lend a sense of accuracy to it as well. Now, in my rulers field guide, I explain what the perspective rulers are in the program as well as the basics of how they work. In this series, I'm going to walk through how I use these rulers to create a scene for characters to inhabit. In this case, I'm going to create a room with some furniture and other various odds and ends. I'm breaking this lesson down into three parts over three videos. This episode explains how to plot out a room in one point perspective. The next episode will deal with plotting out the same room in two and three point perspective. And the final episode will show how the, all this prep work can help add elements and figures to the room with the proper accuracy and scale needed. So let's get started. Now generally before I break out any perspective rulers, I usually start doodling out a rough idea of what I want my scene to look like. Just like I would draw a character loosely before refining it later on, I try to do the same thing when plotting on a scene, regardless of the perspective I'm drawing in. I'm not worried about accuracy at this stage. I'm more focused on the basics of the room and the mood I'm trying to portray in the scene. As long as the depth lines are generally heading towards the vanishing point, it's all good. Now eventually I'll find a scene that will work for me. Usually it's when I find myself populating a particular sketch with various bits of furniture and other objects. So this is what I came up with for my example. Now it's time to lay down the perspective ruler and start building up this room. I switch to the ruler tool and in the ruler subtools palette select perspective ruler. I make sure that the content of process is set to add vanishing point and I lay down my two guidelines along the near wall to create my vanishing point and horizon. Now I've seen other artists that can take just the horizon and vanishing point and create a beautiful intricate interior scene. As I've discovered on numerous occasions however, I am not one of those artists. I need visual cues, especially ones that help me gauge the size and placement of objects in the scene. So I'm going to take advantage of the ruler's perspective grid option to create a basic wireframe of the room. I first switch to the object select tool and I select the perspective ruler. On the tool properties palette, I'm going to turn on a perspective grid. And there are three grids that I can choose from, XY in red, YZ in green, and XZ in blue. I want to grid out the far wall first, which happens to be the red grid, so I turn that one on. The control point seen here is what I use to move the perspective grid along the canvas. I'm going to place the control point on the bottom left corner of the wall, making sure one of the vertical grid lines matches the wall corner and a horizontal line matches the floor. I've decided that the room is going to be 8 feet high, and I want each square on the red grid to represent one square foot. So coming back to tool properties, I press the plus sign here to expand the grid settings, and I click and drag the slider until the grid is about 8 squares from floor to ceiling. To fine tune the value, I'll click the arrows until the grid line matches where I've placed the ceiling. Then I just adjust the guidelines until they intersect the two corner points on the grid. Switching to the straight line subtool, I start drawing in my wall and grid lines. Now while I could use the pen or pencil tool for this, I like using the straight line tool as the canvas will scroll along with me as I draw. And there's my back wall. Now it's time to draw in the rest of the room. The reason I place the grid's control point in the corner is because it serves as the focal point for all three perspective grids. From this point, all of my respective grid lines will intersect properly with each other, and this helps guarantee that my measurement lines will match up as I grid out this room. So I'm going to switch from the red grid to the green grid to draw in the depth lines of the wall, and then the blue grid to draw in the floor's depth lines. For the ceiling, I could drag the grid control point to the top corner and draw in the depth lines that way, but I would rather keep the grid in place in order to keep it from getting thrown off should I place the control point inaccurately. So instead, I pick grid points along the ceiling as my starting points, and I draw out. And I do the same thing with the other wall. And there we go. All my depth lines are in place. I just have to add in the horizontal and vertical grid lines to the floor, ceiling, and walls, and I'm all done. However, there's a small problem. Because of how the perspective grids are calculated in the program, the horizontal or vertical lines don't match up with the depth lines. There's one here, but depending on the placement of the vanishing point and the size of the canvas, there might not be any lines visible in the scene. So what do I do? Well, simple. I resize the grid. I keep a record of the current grid size someplace should I need to come back to it. Then I click and drag the slider until the horizontal grid lines start to appear on the canvas. I stop when I've reached my desired depth for the scene, which is however many horizontal lines I want on the floor. If I want a 5 foot depth, I resize until there are 5 grid lines, 8 feet, 8 lines, and so on. That all said, how the room is drawn and the size of the grid created on the far wall does have a factor in how the depth is set for the room. At 5 feet, for example, the squares are fairly distorted. This means that the end result will also look more stretched out than if I change the depth to, say, 10 feet. So I adjust the grid size until the squares on the floor look pretty much like squares. Now if you notice, the depth lines have now shrunk, and that's why I needed to record the original grid size. When I decide on the final depth size, I keep a record of that as well if I need to switch between the two grid sizes as I work later on in the process. 
For the wall, I turn on the green grid, find all the points along the corner of the floor where the two grids meet, and I use that as my starting point to draw in my horizontal lines and my vertical lines. For the ceiling, I pick the points where the green grid's vertical lines intersect the top of the near wall noted by the guideline and use those as my starting points for my horizontal lines. I draw in my other wall's vertical lines and that's it. With the sketch and perspective guides hidden, I now have a wireframe layout of the room in one point perspective with each square representing one foot. To test for accuracy, I'll draw a line from a point on the ceiling, say right about here, and draw it down. Depending on how accurate I drew my lines, this should match up almost exactly with the same point on the floor. If it's not exactly on point, it's okay, but if it's way off, that's going to require a do-over. Now fortunately, the line matches up, so I'm all done preparing this scene. If the drawing is from a low angle looking up, I can use the same method, except instead of placing the control point in the corner on the floor, which is hidden, I place it up here in the corner of the ceiling. Beyond that, I go through the same steps as I did before. I place my perspective ruler on the canvas, turn on the red grid and place the control point in the upper corner. I resize the grid until it's what I think is about 8 squares high in the scene, and to mark where the floor will be, I'm going to draw a linear ruler and drag it down to the 8th grid line. This isn't necessary, but it's useful for me to have a general idea of where the floor is. Then I grid out the main wall and draw in my depth lines, resize the blue grid until the number of horizontal lines visible matches the depth I want for the scene, draw in my vertical lines for the wall, and my horizontal lines for the ceiling, and there's my finished grid. And this method can work even if all you see in the scene is one visual cue. In this case, I have a wall and part of a ceiling, but that's it. But again, the same steps as before. I set my vanishing point, turn on the red grid, and place the control point, this time in the middle of the ceiling line right above the vanishing point. This is an arbitrary placement, because I can place it any place along the ceiling line, it just depends on where I want the focal point for my measurements to be. Then, I set my height, and use a linear ruler to mark where the floor is. Draw in my red grid, switch to the blue grid, draw in my depth lines, resize the grid to my desired depth, draw in my horizontal lines, and I'm done. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this part of the lesson. Next episode, we're going to break out more vanishing points and plot out the same room in two and three point perspective. So I hope you check it out. This episode of the Manga Studio Guide was brought to you courtesy of Patreon subscribers like the ones you see here. Thanks everybody. Are you interested in supporting the Manga Studio Guide and helping me keep these videos free for everyone forever? You can do so by subscribing for as little as a penny per video through Patreon or by purchasing books, rulers, page templates, or just throw some money in the tip jar on my online store. Thank you all very much for watching and for your support. And I'll see you next time.